Today we're talking about the pH of car care products. Understanding the pH of the products you're using will make your process safer, more effective, and more efficient. Stick along with us today as we get into it. All right, stick with me here. It's a little bit science-y, but I promise I'll make it short. So the pH scale goes from one to 14, and seven in the middle is the neutral, and one down here is gonna be a low pH, 14 is gonna be high. Each step in between that is tenfold stronger than the one before it as it gets closer to the outside of the scale. So seven, consider that neutral, and as you get from six, five, four, three, two, one, each step in that is tenfold stronger than the one previous. Same on the other side. We go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Each one of those steps is gonna be tenfold stronger than the next. So let's explain why that's important when you're cleaning your car. The first step in selecting the products you're gonna be using and what pH you're gonna be needing is to look at the substrate or the surface that you're gonna be cleaning. So right now we're gonna be doing an exterior wash. And on this car, we know it's ceramic coated, so it has all the chemical resistance that we would want. So it doesn't really matter whether we're using a high pH or a low pH on this vehicle particularly. But if your vehicle is protected with something like a wax, that wax will be removed by having a super high pH or super low pH product. So if you're trying to maintain that surface and maintain that protection, you wanna use more of a neutral. Now in this case, we have a lot of dirt on the vehicle, as you can see, which is gonna be best. Dirt's gonna be removed best with a high alkaline cleaner. That's gonna remove any kind of bird droppings, dirt, any kind of inorganic materials like that. When you get to a wheel, that's gonna be brake dust on there, which is metal and organic material, and that's gonna be best removed with a low pH product. The safest place to start is with a neutral pH, and then you work your way to stronger sides of the scale from there, depending on what kind of problem you're facing with the vehicle. Moab here is a neutral pH, so we're gonna start off with that foam can in the vehicle, and if we have any problem areas, we'll attack those individually with different levels of pH. But we have seen a lot of people do too, they will add into their foam cannon if they know the whole vehicle is gonna need more of a high pH, um, maybe a stripping wash or something like that, that you can add into an all-purpose cleaner into their foam cannon to get that extra cutting power. If you have grease or something like that on the vehicle, that could be helpful, but just keep in mind, you're not exactly sure what the pH is when you start adding in and mixing things yourself. So keep that in mind. So Moab is designed to be a high lubricity soap that's meant for a contact wash. It's a pH neutral, but if you're looking to just spray this on, rinse it off, it will clean some. But if you're looking to just spray something on and rinse it off and have it be perfectly clean, that's when it's really important to have a high pH soap with something like that to remove that dirt and break it down without the need to contact it. When you're contacting the dirt or the surface on there, what you're doing is you're re-exposing that soap to new particles of dirt so it has a chance to break down each one individually. When you're using a high pH soap, it's able to go in there and chemically burn away that dirt and it leave you with a nice clean surface. So picture when you go through a touchless car wash, they're using really high pH soaps, really low pH soaps to go through and eat away that dirt that's on your vehicle or whatever contaminants might be on there. If you're doing a contact wash, which it's, it's less safe because you're actually rubbing the paint, but it's more safe because you don't have to use those high pH or low pH products to get a, achieve a good thorough clean. All right, so JC's car here is ceramic coated, so it kind of really does a lot of the legwork for us when we're trying to clean these vehicles. The dirt really can't bond to any kind of hills and valleys in the paint. It's a nice level surface. So it's really easy to get this car clean, even with just something like Moab, when you're just spraying it, rinsing it off. But as you'll see, as we spray this down, we'll check to see if there's any areas that are still dirty and we'll maybe come in with another contact wash, or maybe we, if we have to hit some uh, problem areas like um, bird droppings or anything like that, we can come in with a high pH, eat those away, and move forward. I have a feeling we're gonna need to attack these wheels with a little something stronger because up here in the Northeast in PA, um, this time of year, they get pretty brutal. So sticking with the theme of starting something that's closest to neutral as we can and working away from there, we have an iron mover on here that's pH balanced. So it's gonna first go in here and it's dissolving away the iron. That's where you can see it's turning orange in these spots. And that's gonna give us a nice, safe, clean on these, on these wheels. That iron mover is safe for all surfaces so you don't have to worry about it damaging anything like this. It's gonna give it a little bit of agitation because it is pH balanced. So if you're trying to clean a heavily soiled wheel like this one, you really wanna give it a little bit of agitation to 
make sure that that product has a chance to touch every part of that soiled surface. But it's nice with this, you can tell when it's reacting with the iron, dissolving that away because it creates that orange color. So you can see there was iron all throughout this wheel. On the outside, it had quite a bit. Then we're gonna pressure wash this off. And if it's sufficiently clean, we can stop there. If we're looking for a little bit more clean, we can jump down into something like an acid that's gonna really go in, dissolve away those metals that are on top. But this iron river should do a pretty good job, especially with agitating it. We shouldn't have any issues with the level of clean we're left with here. All right, so let's rinse this off, see what kind of level clean we got with just iron mover and a little bit of agitation on it. All right, so that's pretty thoroughly clean, just using an iron remover and a brush to agitate that through. If you wanted to go crazy and get some of the nitpick spots that are made to have like heavier corrosion, you can use a lower pH acid with something like that. But keep in mind, anytime you're using those extremes, going lower on the acids, higher on the alkalines, you're, you're taking a risk that if you have some kind of compatibility issue with the vehicle, that you couldn't cause damage to it. So if, for instance, if you have like a matte black wheel, you spray a high pH onto there and it dries on or something like that, you could leave it etched. Or if you have raw aluminum, spray a high pH on there, it could leave it etched up. Make sure you're giving it the best you can with a neutral pH product. And then if you need to go stronger from there, you can move up higher on the scale or lower on the scale, depending on what kind of dirt you're attacking. All right, so you saw how soiled this door was before. And now all we've done is just a neutral pH soap and pressure washed it off. We didn't do any kind of contact wash, which Moab is designed to do. That's why it has that high lubricity in there. So what you could do if you have an area like this, you see how it has, there's still dirt running down. So this car is ceramic coated. We're not worrying about breaking down any kind of waxes or sealants. So we have a high pH all-purpose cleaner here. This is essentially what, uh, the one of those touchless car washes is doing when you go through it. They're using a high pH, the sprays on there, and it can literally cut through it without having to contact the vehicle. But what a lot of people like to do is have a high pH wash if their car ceramic coated. That way it cleans it off without having to contact it and break down the coating, but it's still safe on a ceramic coated vehicle. If it was a carnauba wax that's protecting this vehicle, as soon as you spray this on there, it's taking not only the dirt and the debris, but also the carnauba wax off. So keep that in mind. You gotta understand how you're planning on protecting your paint. Because if it's unprotected and you're spraying it on, you spray on a high pH onto something like raw aluminum, there's a solid chance you could etch that. So you gotta keep in mind what products you're using, what the surface you're spraying them on, and what that pH is. So let's pressure wash this off. And it should come bring that pretty well clean. But if not, then we might have to get something stronger or we might have to even go into a contact wash for that. So as you can see, that high pH went in, cut through the grease and the dirt that was on there and left us with a clean surface. Now we're gonna do that in the other problem areas of the car. That way we can have as least contact with the vehicle as we can. And um, then what we'll go through is do a contact wash on all the areas once all this most stubborn dirt is removed. That's technically the safest way of cleaning your vehicle when it's ceramic coated like this. Now we're gonna actually do the contact wash of the vehicle because we chemically decon the vehicle as best we possibly can. So in theory, there should be the least amount of contamination on here for a contact wash, with thus making it the safest contact wash we could do. So we're using the Moab pH neutral, so it should be returning any kind of areas that were at different pH back to neutral for us. And then we're gonna do the contact wash and uh, rinse it off and we should be set to go. So that's a pretty basic overview of the pH scale and the uses for it. If you enjoy these types of videos, stick along with us because we're gonna have a more in-depth dive on corrosion and pH and all those kinds of things coming out here shortly. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.